Hey there, so hopefully we are live. Just gonna go and check in the group. Uh, there will be a bit of a delay um, watching over in the Facebook group, but hopefully you guys can actually join in and watch along live in the Facebook group with me this evening. So I can see that we are live. And yes, it looks like we're all working. So I'm gonna close that down so that I don't get distracted by my other screen that is playing at the moment. So hey there, and welcome back to episode number three in the Brand Together series. And this one is all about ways to launch your brand. Oh, hey guys, I can see people joining. Yes, it's so good to know that you are here and this is actually live. Woohoo, so good. I can't believe the trouble I've actually had this week with Facebook, but that is not for tonight. It's Friday and we've got a really exciting class ahead of us. So tonight we're talking all about ways to launch your brand. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed the first couple of sessions. Um, if you haven't had a chance, you can catch up with them the rest of this weekend, all of next week. The replays are going to be available for you. So you can recap as much as you need to or just relax all weekend, enjoying, thinking about how you're going to implement all of this stuff into your brand. And then come armed with any questions you've got. Please do let me know your questions. I'm here all week for you next week as well to go through that. So I do really hope that these kind of sessions so far have given you a really good start in place for exploring and developing your own brand. And of course, I hope they have really shown you the value of doing the real deeper strategic work on your brand before you get to the visual stage. So today I have got a bit of a special class for you. Oh, I've just had a notification pop up on my window. Sorry, excuse me. I will just shut that down. So yes, today is a bit of a special class for you because tonight's class is really part of what I teach in my brand and launch program. And I have never shared this online for free before. So it's a special one tonight, whilst we dive into the world of brand launches. Because brand launches really are a little piece of the brand world uh, that often gets forgotten. But it's just as important to plan your brand launch as it is to get brand clarity at the start of your brand journey. So your brand launch is that moment where you get to show your confident new brand to that world of your perfect customers. And that sounds pretty dreamy, right? So by now, hopefully you guys all have a pretty good idea of who I am. But if you've been through kind of all of the previous episodes in this series, then I won't go into full intro mode for you. But for those that are new or have just jumped right in and started with this class tonight, then hi, I'm Dee Woodward and I'm the ballsy entrepreneur's go-to for creating powerful strategy sound structure, irresistible offerings, and an unforgettable brand. And tonight we're talking all about brand launches, but more specifically, eight ways to launch your brand. And we're gonna be looking at why you need to launch your brand, how to prep your brand for launch, and I'm gonna introduce you to the brand launch laws. And then we're gonna get into those eight brand launch strategies that you can steal. So let's get cracking. Why you need to launch your brand. So you've invested time and cash and blood and tears in discovering your brand clarity. You've got brand confidence oozing out of you. Your logo is finally up there with the best of the best. You've got that kind of logo that leaves a mark on your perfect customer's soul, all from that one simple little graphic. And you didn't even know that was possible until you went all in on creating that kind of brand that you wanted to be known for. And now what? Do you just switch your website over to a new style or update your Facebook header and hope that the right people see it and get it? No. But unfortunately, that's what so many people do when it comes to the end of their brand journey and they haven't really made any plans for what's next. And you wouldn't launch a new product or program online without some sort of warm-up, without some sort of level of event to really get people wanting to hear from you. So why is it 
<laughs> we see so many people getting to what is the most exciting part of the brand process and then nothing tumbleweeds <laughs> now I was actually looking for a good tumbleweeds picture to go in here uh, but then I realized that I actually quite love the look of the word itself on its own better anyhow your new brand wants to make an impression on the world and that's what it's really here for your brand has to stand out in a world that's bursting already with brands that people are already invested in and that's absolutely chock with marketing messages everywhere you look and there's new products and services being launched the internet over so how do you get people your people to pay attention to your brand and the answer is you've got to create an outstanding assertive launch for your new brand so you've spent all those hours building your business hours we're talking months years all that time building your business and really now discovering your brand so let's take the time to plan how you're going to let the world know about it and whether you're starting from brand new or you're rebranding an already established business these laws that I'm about to introduce you to will save you countless headaches and almost just as many pounds when it comes to the time that you introduce your brand to the world. Brand launch laws. How to prep your brand for launch. Launch number one. Law number one. Launch number one. <laughs> Give yourself time. So launching your brand is really quite an exhilarating event and it can be hard to have to wait until all the many bits are ready for you to launch but a little bit of patience will make all the difference and all the more rewarding when it comes to that big event so give your team plenty of time to make sure that you have a real sound launch strategy in place before you reveal your new brand because you'll only get to do this once well hopefully unless you are going to have to rebrand again um you may rebrand multiple times there's no right or wrong but let's say you're just doing this once most people think about it take years to plan their wedding and i'd say launching your brand is easily as important if not more important than that but then i'm uh, probably not the best <laughs> judge for that because i'm not one for long drawn out planning my wedding actually only took about a couple of months from the idea to the done deal um, and that's about as long really as you should spend prepping for your brand launch but you don't need to wait until your brand design has been completed and all your graphics are ready to go live and to start planning your launch your brand launch plans really should be part of the brand design and development process so in fact I really want you to make a note of that right now so that whoever you work with on your brand whether you're doing it yourself or whether you hire it out, make sure that they factor in a stage for your brand launch. And that can happen alongside the brand design work. You can absolutely be planning your brand launch from the moment that you've got a real clear sense of your brand clarity. So giving yourself this time in this brand process means that you're gonna have space to start building hype for your brand. Whilst you're also giving yourself plenty of time to make sure that all of the many moving places are in order and ready to go. So maybe, perhaps, you design a holding page for your website. But promise me this, if you create a holding page, don't just direct it to one of those something is coming pages or even worse still, like announce that you're making some changes. Um, use this space to really start to tease about what's to come and include some clues to your new brand style and make it a really fun place to experiment with your newfound brand clarity perhaps you include a bit of a countdown timer for a sense of achievement and so I quickly mocked this up as a little example um, maybe you're having a countdown to your private launch party and you could just do something simple like this make the page an invite and absolutely include an email capture form on it because it doesn't have to be anything really content specific here it could just be as fun as you know grab a ticket to our vip launch or reserve my ticket as we've got on this example so this is just an idea to really hopefully inspire you to just make sure that you factor in more time than you think that you're going to need when it comes to launching your brand because a well-planned brand launch really allows you 
to re-engage with existing customers and captivate those new ones. And when it's done well, it can significantly increase sales. Now, poorly planned launch is going to lead to confusion and often dispute from customers who don't really understand why you'd want to change things. So you've only got one chance to make that first impression. So make sure you get it right by really giving yourself the time to do it fully. Law number two, tell the story. So why are you rebranding? Let people know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, position your brand launch as a fundamental piece of the wider story, because it is. And while you might have kind of started into the idea of rebranding because you felt that something was off uh, with your current brand and you figured that perhaps a better looking website would fix that, and it absolutely will, but your brand doesn't start with your fonts and your colors and your fancy photos. It starts with clarity and strategy, and it starts with those uncomfortable questions that are going to make you squirm at the thought of actually admitting the truth uh, that reveals these things that you didn't even know that you felt about what you do until you really started on this rebrand journey. That's the story that you need to tell. Bring your audience along on the journey with you after you've figured it out though. Uh, No one needs to see you kind of (laughs) crying into your computer in those uh, moments when you're questioning why you ever really set out on this rebranding journey because it's opening up all sorts of (laughs) kind of holes for you to dig into and you're contemplating whether you should really just stay exactly where you are. Nobody needs to see that side of it. But, you know, it's worth the messy middle when you get to the other side and when you've got that clarity in your brand then you can start to really share the story that brought you to your rebrand so were there industry changes that showed that you needed to rebrand was there a change inside your business that required a refresh of the way that you you know do your brand and what does all of this mean for your customers always remember when you're telling your story to your audience that you're telling it with that what's in it for me phrase in your mind what's in it for your audience always keep that in mind now there's a great example of this was airbnb when they launched their new identity they really managed to kind of navigate the ever potential backlash that always comes when a company decides to rebrand by making sure that their audience knew that there was a deeper reason behind the changes and that it was unquestionably related to that deeper story that they wanted to tell with their brand and by telling that story behind your rebrand and connecting your new identity to a story that is bigger than just the visual changes that the world gets to see then your new brand really becomes an evolution with so much greater significance and purpose then, you know, what those miffed kind of audiences may just see as an unnecessary change to your logo. Law number three, know your audience. So your goal is to develop a strategy for your launch that's going to get your brand in front of as many eyes as possible. But you want those eyes to be the right eyes. You want those eyes to be the eyes of your perfect customers. So it's absolutely no use launching your brand to people who don't want what you've got or worse that you're not interested in working with and that's why we go really deep on understanding who your potential customers are and what's important to them at the brand clarity stage so go back to that second episode um, in this series for more on that if you need to but one more thing to note here when it comes to your audience before you plan your um, brand launch take a note of what your competitor's audience is like. So do a little bit of stealth kind of stalking here to find out who they're targeting and how they're promoting their business. Now your goal with this is to really get an idea of what they're up to so that you can be sure what you're doing and what you're about to kind of present in your launch is going to be a contrast to this. It's going to be original and stand out. When you know who your audience is, it really does become that much easier to determine when and how you should launch your brand to connect with those people. Law number four, brand everything. 
<laughs> so after you've kind of gone to all of the lengths of deciding on the name of your business, on creating a logo, designing your website, uh, you really do need to make sure that you continue branding every aspect of your business. So there are a number of different ways that your audience is going to experience your brand. Um, it really is quite staggering if you think about your website, social media, marketing collateral, signage, there's business stationery, lead magnets, advertising, the list really does go on. But you can't create a real significant brand recognition if your brand isn't consistent across all of your platforms. So don't forget to brand everything. And yes, it is a pain. So yes, you probably will want to kind of hand over the nitpicking of all the places that your brand currently shows up that you know you're going to need to update um, over to someone else. But it is crucial that all of these touch points are updated before you unveil your brand to the world. So we've got the brand touch points checklist in the group, um, which gives you a big kind of view of many, many different points that your brand touches. So go and grab that to have a little bit of a scout and through and that'll help jog your memory about where you might have some old brand materials lurking that you need to pay attention to and make sure they're updated to fit with your new brand style. You want your brand to really be instantly known when someone finds you wherever it is that they find you. And there is nothing more confusing or ineffective than an inconsistent brand launch. Law number five, brand in a mystery. Now, if you make your brand launch an exciting, can't miss event for your audience, then people are gonna be counting down the days until they get to see what it is that you're talking about. And one of the best ways to do this is to build in a little mystery. Don't give too much away. Don't share too many details about your brand launch before your launch date. You want to tease your followers with little nods to what's coming, maybe a few subtle hints on social media, show a little bit of the behind the scenes work, maybe start to reveal some of the parts of the design creative as it gets closer to your launch day and start sharing that brand story. I mean, create some videos that really help stir up the excitement and think about starting a countdown timer somewhere. They're quite fun. Game time timers. I mean, you see them all the time, but they do actually work. They are very effective. Uh, so you might want to put a countdown timer uh, to the launch of your new brand on your website because it is a simple tool to do. Now, there are many ways that you can build the excitement around your brand launch. So you've just got to make sure that you choose the ones that reflect your brand style and that fit your brand values. Now, the more people that you get really excited about your business, the better. You'll have an absolute swarm of activity on launch day with people coming to check you out and what you've been hinting at for months. And that's the kind of excitement that building brand mystery into your launch helps you achieve. Law number six. Hopefully you're all still with me here. I haven't seen any... Uh, notifications pop up that we've dropped out of signal or anything so uh give me a little like or a thumbs up just to make sure that we are all still connected here so law number six launch your brand so don't actually forget to launch your brand <laughs> because introducing a new brand to the world really is quite a thrilling hair raisy kind of makes you feel a little bit sick in a good way thing to do but it's not like it's every day that you get to really showcase something so full of purpose and strategy and inspiration. And it's all yours. You created this brand. Its roots are absolutely woven with yours. And, you know, that's quite an exciting thing to show to the world. So you can get a little bit overexcited about showing it off to everyone too soon. But when it's time to launch... Don't actually forget to launch. Uh, but that said, make sure that you don't get too click happy on that publish button because you don't want to risk like revealing your new brand before its official launch date because all of the effort that you go, you're go you going to put into uh, your brand launch can be diluted when you have a bit of an overexcited start. So give yourself and your team enough time to really make sure that all of your new assets are ready to be deployed at the same time or 
as close to the same time as possible. You know, schedule your emails, schedule your social media updates, get all your graphics organized and ready to go live. And then when everything is ready, go for it and really go for it. Use every tool that you have to shout about your brand from emails and press releases, social media events, everything that you can use, use it because this is your big brand moment and it's not time to be shy. And then law number seven, keep branding. So your brand launch is really just the beginning because now your new brand is out there. You've got all the eyes that you want on it and now it's the time to keep the momentum going and to continue to wow your audience with the full experience of your brand, all for the long term. Because your brand launch really sets the stage for everything that's to come. So now it's the time to keep consistent with your content creation, to plan your marketing campaigns, to keep on top of your brand development, and don't let the power of your brand launch fall flat just when it's getting started. Because your brand really is never done. It's a living, powerful system that really calls for regular maintenance to thrive. So that's the seven brand launch laws to live by. We've got give yourself time, tell the story, know your audience, brand everything, brand in mystery, launch your brand, and then keep branding. And launching a new brand doesn't have to be this kind of big overwhelming task it really should be a fun celebration of all the work that you put in behind the scenes and with a solid brand strategy in place including your launch plans you'll make a real powerful first impression and really continue to grow your tribe of perfect customers so remember these laws and you'll be showing up confidently as the leader you are even if your brand is brand new and now for the meat of it, the best bit, the juicy stuff. Uh, we've got the basics covered now. So let's get really into the kind of creative stuff, the ways to launch your brand. And I'm going to share with you eight brand launch strategies that you can absolutely steal. So now you know why you need to launch your brand and the steps that you can take to ensure that your brand launch is a success. Now let's look at some of those steel worthy brand launch strategies and why they might be perfect for your brand. First up, number one, the brand challenge launch. So this is one of the easiest ways that you can really launch your brand and you don't have to just keep it for launch day only. So this is a great brand launcher for kind of multiple times during the year. Uh, you can use this just to really keep engagement going as well as launching your brand. Just keep that momentum going, that maintaining of your brand that we just talked about. So I first used uh, this style of launch with a personal stylist brand going back, I think it was about six or seven years ago now. And it really is though just as effective today as it was then. Now, unfortunately I haven't got any of the graphics from that exact launch to show you because those files died a slow and painful death with my old Mac back in, I think it was 2015. Um, but the simple idea behind this style launch is that you host a challenge and you share it on your social platform and in your email and you encourage as many people to really get involved and share the fun as possible. So for this brand launch style to work, you need to have a brand that really lends itself to something fun and easy for people to take part in. So think of all of those kind of charity based social media challenges that you see that really do just take on a life of their own uh, because they're exciting and they're fun and they're easy for people to take part in but we wanna use that magic in our brand launches. So you're gonna set a time frame, maybe a week or two weeks, or it could even be a month for this challenge. And then set small, easy to follow challenges every day that relate to your business and your brand. So for the personal stylist brand that we launched, we did this through a Star Me September challenge. And every day that month, we just shared a really simple style challenge that our audience could join in with at home. And it really encouraged everyone to start sharing their photos online and to tag their style sisters um, so that more people could join in the fun. And it worked brilliantly for this brand and for their kind of perfect customers. They absolutely loved getting involved and loved sharing pictures and loved uh, all of the challenges that we set each and every day because it really reflected that 
brand personality style of being easy and fun but they're also connected to the perfect customers personality style of you know easy and fun so it was an all-round kind of brand launch winner so ask yourself could this work for you and remember the work that you've done on your brand clarity and ask yourself if this fits with what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers want to experience from you you're going to hear me repeat those questions over and over this evening because those are two hugely important questions when it comes to making any decision in your brand but especially when it comes to that moment when you're launching your brand and you're getting all those eyes on you you've got to make sure that it's fitting what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers want to experience from you i may make you write those out line after line (laughs) anyway uh the second one number two the branded content takeover So this is also one of my personal favorites and well I'm just gonna show you straight up why. Here's a lovely example of what a branded content takeover looks like and how beautiful is this. So this was for my lovely client Victoria and when we were launching her uh, Stronger Than Thought brand and we created this stack of really lovely stunning branded content that you can just flood your social media with and you're going to do that over quite a short period of time so it really works great if the content that you're sharing here all relates to uh, one particular kind of topic or an opt-in that you've already got set up for the launch so that you can link all of these kind of content sharing pieces back to a related opt-in which is going to obviously help you grow your email list while you're also launching and getting your branded content out there in front of your perfect people so this launch style pretty much works for anyone (laughs) it's really based on content and your brand so as long as you have a brand and you have something to talk about then you're pretty much good to go with this style so ask yourself those two questions What do you want to be known for? And what do your perfect customers want to experience? And then decide if perhaps this brand launch style could work for you. Number three, the branded website hunt. Now this one, one of my favorites again, they're all my favorites. That's why I'm sharing these ones with you. (laughs) I first spotted this uh, style of brand launch on the Middle Finger Project website uh, when they rebranded a few years back now I think it was a couple of kind of rebrands ago they hosted this website hunt and they had hidden all these clues around their new website and then when you found them they led you through the website so you got a really good look around and then you won a surprise gift at the end and it wasn't so much about the gift that I loved about this I mean it was such a brilliant idea and I have since seen this used in a few different ways on brand launches because it really is quite a fun idea and it's a perfect way to get people to look around your website and to explore the work that you do you're kind of tricking them a little bit on a breadcrumb trail through all of your branded content so it will take a chunk of kind of work and time to really create this kind of launch for your brand so you're going to want to factor that in to the time that you're allowed to do this but what a brilliant way to get people excited about what you do and to really get people's eyes all over your website right at the time that you launch and even just in the style of that branded launch it really tells you a lot about the personality style of that business I mean the prize could be anything Um, I'd recommend definitely it being a kind of simple valuable digital product download of some sorts because you don't really want to go over egg in the prize here Um, but think about could this style of launch work for you and remember all of the work that you've done on your brand clarity ask yourself those two questions if this fits with what you want to be known for and what your perfect customer wants to experience from you and then if you do decide to use this launch then I want to see it I love this kind of website launch so if you launch like this let me know and then maybe I could use you as an example on the next time um, I present this so number four the stalk you everywhere launch (laughs) now this one this one does need some advanced tactics Um, you will need to be going through a kind of brand update or a refresh rather than starting from scratch here 
as we're going to be using your Facebook pixel and ad campaign to really show your new brand to a lookalike list. So hopefully one that's already been built uh, from your current website vis visitors, but you can adapt this and make it work in other ways as well. But mostly you're going to use this launch star to really get all fancy pants and create different brand campaigns to go out to your past customers and to those audience lurkers that you're going to have been gathering up over the years. And we're also going to create a campaign then to go out to those lookalike audiences. So this one means that you absolutely will want to be doing something to build your list along the way, um, which is always a good thing to factor into your brand launches. But this one gives you such an easy way to do it because you're going to be using Facebook tools. So give yourself some extra planning and tech support time if you're going to go down this brand launch style. You might not want to uh, go it alone on this one unless you are already pretty seasoned with your favorite kind of Facebook ad campaigns already. If you've been doing those for a while, then you might be able to just get cracking with this. But I think most people would need a little bit of support really creating an effective a stalk you everywhere type of launch. But it really is a kind of killer brand launch strategy. And it's one that you can absolutely use alongside all of the others as well. So think about, could this work for you? And remember all of the work that you've already done on your brand clarity and ask yourself those questions. What do you want to be known for? And what your perfect customers want to experience from you? So launch style number five, the friends in high places launch. Now, as the saying goes, something along these lines anyway, uh, we are known by the company we keep. Your business can absolutely communicate volumes about its new brand by simply associating itself with other brands that already have equity with your target audience, which is really just a fancy way to say that if you've got friends who've got an audience similar to the ones that you know are your perfect people and you know this friend more than just being a Facebook friend, then reach out to them and ask if they'll be happy to help launch your brand. So naturally, you'll have had to have prepared or you'll want to prepare something of immense value for their audience, something that showcases your brand but really doesn't distract from the person whose audience you're going to be connecting with's brand. And so this strategy works best when you have a network of really great business friends who you already support year round and that you know are not going to get a little bit kind of basic over the fact that you're asking them to help you out. So this is not a strategy to try to use if you don't really know the person that you want to ask. Now I know you wouldn't be but I do have to say this here for full disclosure. Don't be that guy that sneaks into somebody's inbox asking for favours without ever giving any value first. So have you got a friend in high places that would love to support your brand launch? Then remember the work that you've done in your brand clarity. Ask yourself if it fits with what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers want to experience from you and give this tactic a try. If you know that you've got the relationship with the right people where it's not going to feel a bit ick. <laughs> and then number six, the gorilla brand launch. So this is really the king of the stealthily effective ways to launch your brand because the gorilla brand launch is definitely not for the creatively challenged because it demands all your originality and resourcefulness to really stand out but when it's done well you can really gain a large amount of attention and website traffic and even profit whilst spending very little so if you want to give the gorilla brand launch a try then the best way to really think about this is to keep an eye on the kind of viral trends that happen study those for clues in how you can really make this work for your launch or go old school on it and go for the physical mailer kind of thing when you send out something really unique and different that's going to connect with the key influencers in your audience and that's going to start a bit of a ripple effect in your brand so this one takes a bit of thought and plan in and as i said it's gonna take up all of your resourcefulness and creative thinking because you want to create something really original to stand out here we are not sending 
mugs or pens or boxes of chocolate in the post to people? No, <laughs> that's not what this is about. Uh, but if it could work for you, if you have got a bit of an out-of-the-box thinking process and that fits your brand style and you know it's what your perfect customer would like to experience from you, then that could be the absolute perfect brand launch style for you. Number seven, the brand event launch. Now, this is another one of my favorites, mostly because it really is quite easy to do. And there's no limit to the kind of simplicity for how you can host this style of brand launch. So think of it very much like you're hosting a party somewhere that you love, except you're doing it online and you are hosting it for your brand. So maybe you could run a day long kind of open house event or show a behind the scenes of your office or a behind the scenes of your brand. Perhaps it's an event to really showcase what your brand stands for and what your offers are. Maybe you invite guest speakers in that really share the same kind of mindset of you and you create a bit of a, a summit style event with this kind of thing. You want to really offer a bit of a peek into what you do best. So maybe you're hosting a dance party to show off your kind of dance program, or you could host a week long uh, training event or a Facebook party or have an all day access uh, to Voxer if you do more kind of coaching work and that works for you. So you want to share your best content and then make it into a party style event. Invite everyone and really bring them into your brand through a celebration of what you know and what you do best. Now, there are so many ways that this could work for your brand, and it really is one of the most kind of adaptable launch strategies out there. So if you're struggling to think which one of these so far would work for you, then I would say maybe try starting with this one, because as I say, it's one of the easiest, most simplest uh, launch styles that you can pull together. So ask yourself, could it work for you? And remember those two questions. Um, Think back, of course, to all of the brand clarity that work that you've done and make sure that it fits with what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers want to experience from you. Then number eight. So number eight in our ways to launch your brand is the branded giveaway. So this is a bit similar to the challenge launch in that it's a fun and quite effective way to really build excitement around your brand before you launch and so you want to host this kind of branded giveaway and the way to do that is to invite your audience to join in a simple contest with a real clear giveaway at the end Uh, maybe it's a branded box of whatever it is you sell or a free session with you or a place on a program that you offer whatever it is make sure that um the challenge that you set, the contest that you create is entertaining and refreshing and directly related to what you want to be known for. And then just show up and build a relationship with your audience while really encouraging people to share this contest. If it's fun and entertaining and exciting and refreshing um, and something that your perfect customers would want to experience from you, then it's going to be a no-brainer to these people to really share the contest with their audience as well. So the most important thing though, when you're thinking about doing a branded giveaway, is to make sure that the giveaway at the end is exclusive and worthwhile. And that might sound obvious, but it can completely fall flat when you have some sort of kind of limp giveaway at the end. I mean, there's only so many iPads that people want to win before it just becomes boring. And that sounds terrible, doesn't it? As I'm saying that, I'm realizing how awful that sounds. But it's kind of like the uh, the lazy approach to a giveaway. Um, so just think about it a little bit more. Think about something that really directly relates to what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers would want to experience. Um, because you do not also, also you do not want to attract just the freebie hunters with this kind of style and there are a lot of freebie hunters out there that will jump on a branded giveaway if the giveaway is something generic like an ipad so think about could this work for you can you think of a prize that um, is going to appeal to your tribe of perfect customers and that will really inspire your audience to interact with your brand if you can 
go for this. It is a simple, easy, fun, effective way to really build that ex- excitement and engagement around your launch. And just always remember to come back to those two questions. What do you want to be known for? And what do your perfect customers want to experience? And then there's a sneaky ninth strategy in here. And that is the hybrid launch. So your brand launch is your brand launch. And it might very well be that one of these strategies works perfect for you and your brand. Or most likely there are bits from each that fit your brand. And in which case the hybrid could be the perfect one for you. So simply pick and choose the bits that really fit your brand and then put together your own brand launch style because it's your brand. It's your launch. You get to decide what will work best for you and your perfect customers because it all comes back to those two questions. What do you want to be known for? And what do your perfect customers want to experience from you? So guys, that's it. It was a bit of a shorter session today. Um, Eight ways to launch your brand and none of them involving selling your soul or showing up in any way other than the way that you want to be known. So tell me, which strategy will you steal for your own brand launch? I mean, they're all great in their own ways and each will have elements that would be perfect for your brand. So you might even want to kind of mix up things a little bit um, and go for the kind of hybrid option or invent your own style completely and create something unique to your brand. I mean, if you're leaning into doing that, then do let me know because there's nothing I love more than an absolute blank canvas when it comes to these things to help people create from. So if you've got an inkling for a, a unique launch style for your own brand, then do let me know and I'd love to help you out with that. So there is no law that says that you have to choose from one of these eight launch strategies. Um, In fact, there are many other launch strategies out there and I haven't included all of them here. And that's not because that they aren't good enough, but because these are the ones that I've got the most experience seeing launching brands for my own clients. And so that, my lovelies, really does bring us to the end of tonight's class. So as always, I would love to hear your takeaways from this session tag me over on Facebook or Instagram and let me know what you've loved the most and what you're going to take away and start using in your brand. That will also add a tick in the easy ways to show up for your brand list. So there's, we're adding to them in each class this week. Um, And if you have loved what you've heard tonight, then I would really love it if you'd share our brand together series with your friends. We've got one more class coming up together and then a week of support and action taken before this group and the contents are going to head off into, you know, free product lockdown. <laughs> and I would really love to help support and share the message about the importance of branding with as many business owners as possible. So if you know someone that would benefit from this, then I would really love it if you would share the link with them by design.co.uk forward slash brand together and they'll get access to all of the replays whilst this group is still active so we've got a whole nother week of brand together together (laughs) and that's it really for tonight Um, I'm going to go and check the comments in a second but I do hope that you've loved this class I'm going to go and grab a Friday glass of wine and I will check back in the group for any urgent questions tonight Um, if you would like a copy of the notes from tonight then let me know Um, I've put there should be a post going into the group um, in the files tab with the notes from this so you can download them and make some notes on what you're going to do for your own brand launch and of course I'm going to open up the questions thread that will be open very soon and I'll be checking in the group and answering any questions I can over the weekend and then we're going to meet back here on Monday for the final episode in the series the brand teardown and you're not going to want to miss this I mean it's really good so until then Have a really lovely weekend and I will go and check the comments and I will come over and reply to everyone. And of course, I've got to tally up all of the people that have been here live because we had our sneaky uh, fast action freebie freebie Friday or FAF because it's much easier to call it FAF um, in the kind of month long celebration I'm having here towards my 10th anniversary in business this month. So I'm going to check out all of the comments. If you're alive, 
make sure that you give me a like or a comment because that will make it easier for me to pop your name down and you guys will get to come and join me for that brand of mind I think is what I decided to call it <laughs> but I will go and uh, reply to your comments now and everybody have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys all again on Monday bye for now <laughs>